So before getting into Detroit's fourth overall pick, I'll give us a little prelude here. Um, before the, we, obviously we've talked episode after episode after episode for the past, I don't know, I think 16 years about this fourth overall pick. But in the live stream, we had a conversation talking about who our preferred picks were, and all three of us said the same thing. Assuming Lafreniere, Byfield, and Stutzel are off the board, our preferred picks in order are Lucas Raymond, Cole Perfetti, and Marco Rossi. And we had three different predictions on the board. Um, I had Lucas Raymond, Evan had um, Cole Perfetti, and Brad, you had Cole Marco Rossi. Oh, Evan, did you have Marco Rossi? No, I th- I thought they would take Cole Perfetti. I thought we had three different ones. Anyways, that was a long time ago. I'm sure there's a way to go back and it check. Five but we're not doing that now. How can we remember that? Um, we I'm pretty sure we had three different ones. Regardless, uh, all three of us consensus said like you know we've considered this up and down, and there's definitely a cluster of players we're happy with. No matter who the Red Wings come away with here, there's a, a group of like three players where we're thrilled, and probably five more where we're still like really really happy and excited. And let me tell you our excitement when Detroit picked Lucas Raymond fourth overall. (laughs) My first thought was hell yeah. And my second thought was, oh man, Max doesn't have to stay up too late writing his article tonight because it's not someone wildly off the board. And my third thought was, wow, this is wildly different than the cider draft. I mean, I don't think he finished saying for Lunda before I had started my fist pump. Um, again, it, we've been on the Lucas Raymond train, uh, for this pick for literally as far back as we can remember going back even into last year, um, exceptionally talented, exactly what the Red Wings need. Uh, Pierre Maguire thought he might have a chance at creeping into the top 10 and I'll be damned that crazy son of a bitch was right. Uh, he made it, he made it into the top 10. Uh, very fortunate for the Red Wings because uh, again we we wanted Raymond. There weren't a ton of connections, uh, rumors I should say, from Raymond to the Red Wings. Pronman brought something up the night before. There was a few pieces here and there that trickled out, but it was mostly Perfetti. Um, there was the odd Sanderson rumor and the odd Askarov rumor, as we covered in the last episode. Again, it's Steve Eisenman. He's a vault. Beyond happy to see that it was Lucas Raymond because he he truly was the best pick for the Red Wings there and he was the best player available there. My So here's what brought me to the Lucas Raymond prediction because obviously we had the whole Cole Perfetti timeline leading up and as we've discussed before, after talking to Sam Costantino, we kind of all softened on that because we realized that a lot of these links might have been conjecture. The, the thing that tipped me towards Raymond and probably the source of the gut feeling was when Eisenman had his press availability, he got a question about whether, I believe it was from Helene St. James, about whether the recent run of games in Sweden um, influenced their pick or their board at all. And he said, no, uh, our, our boards have pretty much stayed the same. It hasn't changed our minds uh, too much on anything. Like uh, Nothing has really switched around on our boards. And all I could think was, Raymond has looked really freaking good at the start of the SHL season. Like, so good that a lot of people who were soft on Raymond were like, oh, no, this guy should be a top five pick at the very least. And I was like, he must be their guy. Like, Hakan Anderson's there in Sweden. He knows Lucas Raymond, and he's not, like, the, how good he is isn't obfuscated by uh, Raymond being buried on Forlunda's fourth line. And Dre, after the first round, Draper confirmed it, and he said, yeah, our board went uh, Lafreniere, Byfield, Stutzla, then Raymond. Like, if Raymond was there at four, that's who we were going to take. Um, he was their guy through and through from the summer moving forward. So the Perfetti thing, any Askarov links, anything else like that, that was either, um, you know, crossed wires, best guesses, or smoke screens at best. Nobody knew anything. Nobody had any good information because Steve Eisman keeps everything top secret. And I like it that way. It, the The anxiety leading up to it was a bit much, but uh, hey, it was fun. And, you know, again, comparing it to the cider pick from last year, this was the exact opposite reaction. This is what I needed. Yeah, we yeah. we really did need this. 2020 has been the longest decade ever. We, we needed something. 
so we did do the full uh, pre-draft preview episode on Raymond, and there will be a lot of uh, talk about Raymond to come. But very quickly, because we're going to have a lot of new listeners on this episode, let's talk about who Lucas Raymond is as a player and what he's going to bring to the Red Wings. So he compared himself to a mix of Artemi Panarin and Mitch Marner. And I, I really... Good? I really do like that comparison because Marner's been my comparison for him for a while. And again, player comparisons aren't always fair, but it makes it easier to understand a bit of context. Raymond is not a great north-south skater. Good enough, not elite. Amazing agility and edge work. Fantastic shot, elite playmaker, highly competitive, plays all areas of the ice. Um, Just a high, high, high hockey IQ, especially in the offensive zone. The Chris Draper went out of his way several times to mention how clutch Raymond comes up in big games, even playing as an underager. And um, that he specifically re- mentioned the U18 gold medal game. I believe he was a 16-year-old at the time where he scored a hat-trick, including the OT winner. And, I mean, if he were a slightly better skater and two inches taller, I mean, he's in the conversation with Byfield, in my opinion. Um, but he's not, so we have to deal with that. Um but the way the NHL is nowadays, big defensemen and small forwards are what teams look like. I should say small, highly skilled forwards are what teams look like. And I'm not saying Lucas Raymond will be a 100-point scorer in the NHL, but he could. His ceiling could be that high. He's He should be uh, a point-per-game player. So if you're getting an 80-point player at pick four, I, I'd still consider that a win. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm... Over the moon. He is the absolute perfect fit for what the Red Wings need right now. And on top of all that, he shoots right. Yeah. Um, one thing to continue the uh, the breakdown on Raymond, one thing that Brad mentioned, which just, I think is a really big key, is that Raymond's not the quickest skater north-south. Um, but he is very, um, his first few steps are really strong. His edge work is strong and he's agile. And in my mind, that matters a lot. And that matters so much where I'm fine with him not having quick north south speed. That is the easiest part of skating, the overall attribute to train. And that comes with adding strength and muscle to your legs. Um, and not only that, like skating coaches, that's exactly what they can work on. What's really hard to teach is edge work and pushing off and using your, your strength down low, uh, to get a few, a few quick steps and first few, uh, strong strides to, to gain separation. And I think Raymond does really well there already. Um, so we might be looking at a situation where some people are misconstruing speed for overall skating, which isn't uh, accurate. And then Raymond comes in, works on his uh, his overall strength and speed, and all of a sudden this guy's a fantastic skater all around. Um, in addition to everything else Brad said, yeah, the, the right shot off the left wall, especially on the power play where Lucas Raymond is expected to be a power play quarterback because he is such a smart player with such high ho- hockey IQ, that is a big key for Detroit. Um, he's not going to come over next season. Uh, Eisenman and Draper confirmed that, but there's, there's still a chance for the season after, after the 2021, 2022 season. And because he's playing in the SHL right now, which is a professional men's league in Sweden, this kid, it, we, we might not be waiting too long to see Lucas Raymond make an impact. Uh, no, my, w- one more ahead. adjective <clears throat> to the list of adjectives you just used. He's an elusive skater as well which helps him not only in the corners and in tight, but it also helps him in the open ice to, to, you know, to avoid other players and create some offense for himself. So you don't have to be the fastest, but if you're agile, you're elusive, uh, you're, you're going to make yourself a lot more offense. Go ahead, Brad. Um, yeah, my, my gut is telling me that um, he's going to spend this entire season in Forlunda, and if this season goes well for him and he produces, I think he's a Red Wing the following season. Just so we can clarify now that uh, the 1920 season's over, can we just start referring to the upcoming season as this season? Yeah, yeah. Just, okay. Definitely. So yeah, I don't, obviously he's staying over in uh, Forlunda this season. I think next season is when we're going to see him in Detroit, if he has, uh, let's say, not an ideal season in Forlunda and, or, and his hot start regresses, wouldn't be surprised to see him get a year in Grand Rapids. But yeah, I don't think he's staying in Europe for longer than this year. But hey, time for that to change. There's always time for that to change. Yeah. And again, so much more to come about Lucas Raymond. But really, truly, like we all believe that this was the best player on the board. And um, it between Tim Stutz and Lucas Raymond, it was closer than people anticipated. Would have been happy with either, but with how the draft went, having Lucas Raymond fourth overall was just like 
he could end up being a top three player out of this draft or better who knows um and it was it's a, he's easily detroit's best prospect right now and their top prospect that they've had in a long long time at least 30 years Thanks for tuning in to the Winged Wheel Podcast. Be sure to check out wingedwheelpodcast.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll also find links to other ways to support the show, such as Patreon, official podcast apparel, and more. And don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at Winged Wheel Pod. And of course, the hosts at Brad Crisco, at Ryan Hanna WWP, and at Hockey Town Evan.